The New Patriotic Party wants to break the eight, but before it breaks the eight, it has to fix its own internal issues. People fear that there may be cracks, cracks that result from the flag bearer elections. But even before the flag bearer elections, there have to be drivers who drive the party into that election. It is at that critical stage now, the New Patriotic Party, where it has to choose national leaders. You remember what happened after the Afoko exit and all of that campaign. Now, there's a need for a new group of leaders. The national chairman is not running, but the national, well, he said I shouldn't call him national secretary. The general secretary, John Boydou, wants to go again after having been promoted from organizer to acting general secretary to substantive general secretary. But he has on his heels three people who are fighting him, uh, boot for boot, to borrow John Mahama's words. On Face to Face today, I'm going to speak to one of the persons who wants to remove John Boydou as General Secretary. My name is Umaru Sandamado. You're welcome to Face to Face. My guest served as a member of parliament uh, for Suhum. He served twice. Uh, a number of the times he went through stiff internal contests. Uh, he actually said four times. And uh, he went, I beg your pardon, he went through stiff contests at the primary level at a point, but he still see through. But for the past four years or so, he is no more in parliament. He seems to have decided not to go to parliament again. He's angling for a bigger job, I should think. He have, I haven't asked him, so I'll be asking him since he's in the studio with me. He's Honorable Frederick um, Oparianza. He was whipping MPs in parliament. He got whipped out. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank <laughs> to you. Face to face. How are you? I'm good. Ah, you did four times in parliament, so 92 or 96? 2005 to 2021. I only left parliament last year. Oh, so you served Kufo's second term. Continue with Mills' stem, Mills' Mahama, and then Akufado's Akufado first stem. The people rejected you after? I don't know if it's a rejection, but for someone who uh, occupied a seat which no predecessor had held for one, more than one term, and no political party had ever uh, occupied in opposition, after four terms, if you lose a primary, I wouldn't call that being kicked out. So it was a swing seat before you came in? It had always been a swing seat since Kwame Nkrumah. And you stabilized it? And I stabilized it for the party. Do you worry that that swing will return? Not as long as I'm alive. I, after I lost to my opponent, I supported him fully. And not only did he win, but we managed to increase the margin by a hooping additional 10,000. Let me learn Suhum for a bit. For those of us who drive to Kumasi, we know where that big interchange is. Well, is it an interchange or flyover? Which was not used for a long time. Until That's, another kid. Well, it was not used for a long time. <laughs> That's where Suhum is, right? That's exactly we rarely right. move in and out of the town. We don't go right or left. Yeah. Tell us what Suhum is or where Suhum is. On who oh, makes Suhum, Suhum? Suhum is at the crossroads of the uh, Ghana's main highway, Lincoln Accra to Waga, and also the main highway crisscrossing the eastern region from Somenya Kuforidia all the way through Oda. So that interchange, as you called it, uh, sits right at that junction. It's just about an hour's drive from uh, Accra and it's known for its high uh, yield and cocoa uh, farm products. So, so you have forest there? We have some forest. We have uh, Not large the Etiwa, cocoa. right? Close to Etiwa. Etiwa, part of Etiwa is uh, right into uh, nearby environs of Suhum. So who do you share boundary with as a constituency? We share boundaries with about six or seven constituencies. Abuakwa North, Abuakwa South, New Jamin North, New Jamin South, Ayesuano, uh, Kwapim North. Yeah. What's the ethnic makeup? It's, um, the land is owned mainly by the Achims. Oh, so it's an Achim. But there's a huge Kwapim population. Okay. And I'm a Kwapim. Oh, okay. And then there is some Kwaus also for the Akans. And then there's a, a major population for the uh, Dangwis. Okay. Rubus, Shais, and some uh, Ewes. And then in the Suhum Township itself, mm -hmm. you have uh, huge populations of people from the northern descent. I see. Why is it called Suhum Krabwa Kota? Is it the Kota, <coughs> the Bitumin we know, or there's something else that they, I've always been thinking about that? <laughs> well, there is a town called Kota. And it's spelled Kota, C O L T. Okay. Like Kota. Yeah. yeah. And then there's a town called Krabwa. 
but um, it is no longer Suhum Krabwa Kota. Suhum is now a municipality. So it used to be a district called Suhum, Suhum Krabwa Kota. Yes. So the Krabwa Kota has been carved out. Krabwa, that's a Yenzuano. Oh, that's so a Yenzuano district. Yes. Oh, that's the one that borders uh, Greater Accra. Um, yes. Okay. It's Ahmad Regia Desu. Okay. And then Asamankesi. Yeah. I think Ajin Kotoko and those places are under. Uh, uh, oh, those are part Papasi, of. Uh, those places are under. Okay, yeah. okay. But just after that, you know, Teacher Manti, mm -hmm. that is where Ayenzuano starts from. So that used to be the border for the Suhumkra Wakota district. Is it that you have a river there called Ayenzu or something? There's an Ayenzu river. Yeah. So then Ayenzuano. Yes. Ayenzu oh, so Suhum is now an autonomous and municipality. Suhum is also a river. Oh, Suhum is also a river. Yeah. Is it polluted by Galamse? Um, luckily not. <laughs> luckily not. Thank God. Please keep it safe and preserve it's big, it for us. It's a big river. It's, uh, a, it's small, a very small one. Uh, uh, forgive me, we are talking to whom because that's where you've been for 12 years. It's, working it's always interests. 16 years. Mm, 16 years. Always it always interests me to talk about. Let's talk about it a bit more. So you have a new person who is an MP. Does he need your blessing to continue to remain in parliament? Or I, I wouldn't say so. I haven't, or I did not... Um, uh, represent the constituency in a way that uh, makes it necessary for somebody to have my blessing. I'm mm -hmm. a very liberal person mm -hmm. and uh, even the people who support me, uh, it's not dependent on anything. It's by choice. You look at my good works and you think you want to be part of my team. You are part of my team. Uh, even when you don't support me, I won't push you away. I'll reach out to you to try to align whatever interests you with my own interests. You were a whip. Yes, I was. You were removed by Jubilee House, weren't you? I wouldn't say so. I wouldn't even know. But you and suspect I do not so. think that Jubilee House is actually in the business of removing people. Oh, you don't know that? I don't know that for As a, a whip, fact. Are you sure? No, I wouldn't know. Oh, you are just doing diplomacy? No. I mean, people speculate. Were you a thorn in the flesh of the Jubilee House? No. In the Maybe last you were not supporting the Jubilee House. In the last parliament, I did a lot of good work for Jubilee House, if, if you will. I was chairman of communications committee and a member of the finance committee. And there are key uh, bills that pass through the house, uh, which lots of people will tell you uh, the role that I played in facilitating the passage through the house. You are experienced very in parliament. Your colleague from New Job in South also went home, the two of you, from the Eastern region. You don't think it was a plan? Well, we all Do you post it down via, do you drink star beer? And not anymore, no? not since I, I'm contesting somebody who I have. Okay, I'm just saying so that much, you so. sat behind a bottle of beer in the afternoon on Sunday, the two of you just sit down and just... Uh, no, no, we come all the way from Presec through Katanga. Oh, you've so been probably, uh, maybe when it was time to go, we probably had to go. <laughs> <laughs> but you, 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 didn't, you didn't sit down to the analysis and say, we think that someone decided to remove us because of ABCD. The, the things that happen in politics could have several angles and dimensions to them. The easiest and the defeatist approach, in my view, is to point fingers. I've had very tough primaries over the years. From the very time I started uh, wanting to contest back in 2004, my, none of my primaries had ever been uh, easy. And there was no Jubilee House at the time? And there was no Jubilee House at the time. So uh, if you want to point fingers, then Gufo wanted to remove me, mm -hmm. then uh, Mahama wanted to remove me, Mills. Mills wanted to remove me. And so I wouldn't say that. But you're a Kufo boy. Kufo wouldn't want to remove you. And if well, Nanado is a Kufo boy too. Oh, well, yeah. serving in his government. Oh, yeah. But if by um, being Kufo boy means that I was a deputy minister under Kufo, then everybody who served in Kufo's administration. Including people who were ministers, foreign because, ministers, attorney generals. Because, but for MPP, I don't know Kufo from Adam. Oh, really? Yes. I'm from Ekwapim. He's from Ankaria. But you like his type of politics and pers the person he's said to have blessed to be I the next president. I certainly remain eternally grateful to him, having given me an opportunity to serve in his government. And particularly at a time where we had the uh, issue surrounding the sale of Ghana Telecom to Vodafone, which became a major topical issue. And I had the opportunity to uh, show the experience I've had in the telecom industry and in the telecom sector and how, what a great negotiator and communicator that I am. As an electrical engineer? That's right. You, so, you, 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 you still stand by that deal? I still stand by it, yes. So today, I mean, even private entities like Tigo, Etel Tigo are running away from the competition posed by uh, MTN and others. It's not an easy market. I don't know where if Ghana Telecom were to have remained in the hands of government till today, well, we're going to have the kind of capital you need to inject into a company like this 
looking at how government itself uh, struggles. So for you, government should not do a lot of business? Not necessarily a lot of business. It depends on um, uh, the kind of sector it is. For instance, uh, we are now bringing the uh, integrated aluminum sector into mm -hmm. being. Mm -hmm. So you need government to facilitate that. Po policy. To, policy. Not just policy. Even do investments in the until such a time that the sector itself can survive on its own. In times past, the legacy networks of Ghana Telecom was what the entire nation depended on. But when the liberalization of the sector started back in 91, 92, and private entities came up, around the time President Kufo came in, it was obvious that these private enterprises operating in the telecom sector were beginning to get stronger than even the government-owned entities. So for me, at that point, there was no point. So it. based on your estimation, your understanding of the sector, Ghana Telecom wouldn't have been doing as well as Vodafone is doing now? Absolutely not. And, you know, at the time, the major concern Ghanaians had was that we were selling off our entities to foreigners and that the positions would be occupied by foreigners. Ghana Telecom today, who is Vodafone. headed in? I mean, Vodafone. Do you know, still on their registration is Ghana Telecom. Vodafone okay. is only... The brand okay yes so the company itself you know well we sold the shares majority to vodafone but mm -hmm. the company is ghana telecom jointly owned by vodafone and the ghana government so the, the person head in it now patricia it's a ghanaian mm -hmm. i employed her first time at tigo when i was back then at mobitel oh okay go to mtn a ghanaian heads it so the transactions we did the sales of these shares to the uh foreign entities helped us bring in the needed capital to stabilize these companies and to expand the networks and Critics improve upon the of services. your position would say that Goyle still flies our flag and Goyle is doing very well. GT could have done the same. Not necessarily. It's the market of Goyle is not the same as the markets that you have within the telecom sector. Technology is not driving the growth and expansion that you see uh, where the OMCs. But there's innovation in the OMC there is, sector There as well, is innovation. Which is what's happening in the about telecom sector. The speed and the capital uh, layout. <laughs> the kind of capital, you're talking billions of dollars. Does Goyle need billions of dollars to um, run its operations? No. So it's not such a drain on government resources. Resources that government could apply elsewhere. And government is not in the business of running economic ventures. It is in the business of providing social services to the population. And so you will see that when government's attention is caught between providing for an entity whose uh, primary objective is to make profit and an entity whose primary objective is to serve the population's social interest. It government will always, it becomes conflicted and will always opt for the providing for everybody providing for to everybody the through the, social, of the, business the detriment growth. of the business growth i yes. see but but for someone who worked in a government that has presidential special initiatives in all manner of things including cassava it means that you were in a government that believes that the government should be involved in industrialization pushing that agenda yes. alan chamantin was put in charge of that sector yes. means kufo really trusted it. why would you on one hand be pushing that industrialization agenda and on the other hand selling state assets I haven't conflicted myself at all in that sense. Really? Yes, I explained to you that... Because the PSR was to be run by government, not uh, private sector. Precisely. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned that when you want to open up a new sector, it's always important for government to make some investment, to lead the way. You understand? Even now, in terms of 1D1F... Yes, which is what I'm coming to next. Yes, whereas government itself is not investing. Government is giving up a lot of revenue that otherwise it would have earned. We say that we are providing um, exemptions for 1D1F entities. These are revenues that should have accrued to government. But government says, let it go so that those making investments in the selected sectors will be encouraged to put in their monies there. So you will see that it is about the same thing. It is either government is taking its own money and putting it in the sector and encouraging others to go, or it's saying that, you take your money there, and the taxes and duties due me, I will not collect them okay. to encourage you. So, it's so the, the model with the sugar factory in Commander. the central region, Commander, you don't think it should have been started at all I by the government? Well, I, I do not uh, say so. Uh, my challenge with some of our um, 
industries which governments have tried to uh, set up has been the rollout. Okay, uh, I have a factory, and before I cited it, I needed to make sure that I have tons and tons of the raw material, which is water. I produce water and process it. That I will process because the machines you buy for these industries, be it sugar, be it cassava, be it tomatoes, these machines process tons and tons per hour. So if you don't make sure that before you set up, the area where you are setting up has access to these raw materials, you invest, put in equipment, and within the shortest possible time, you can feed the machines. Your employees who have, um, cannot be paid because mm -hmm. the operation cannot sustain itself. So for me, that is the challenge. But governments face this challenge because of, if you know, the short term of existence of a government. And everybody wants to show that, hey, I put in this, I put in that. So if you want to, I'm currently engaged in the process of bringing in some investment, uh, investment for uh, oil palm. We've been going at it for almost two years now. By the time we are ready to go, we have to put out farms. We have to get out growers, smallholders, to roll out their farms before we start even putting in the uh, operational equipment. So you prepare the grounds before prepare you the grounds. What and you by the lifespan of a government, by that time, <laughs> elections are coming. We've yeah. seen the problems yeah. with Tor and yes. Valco. Yeah. Would it be Frederick Oparinson's view that what happened to Ghana Telecom should happen to these institutions, state institutions? Just so you know, I worked at Tor before. Oh, you've worked everywhere then. <laughs> I'm an electrical engineer. Okay. So wherever there are machines, I work. You are involved. Yeah. Um, I think the issue of Tor and uh, Valco, we can probably have whole sessions about them. Uh, as the oil sector uh, grew uh, and got liberalized, you now had people having the ability to bring in bulk or the BDCs. BDCs were doing yes. risk business. Risk business. So directly it puts Tor into competition with them. And so that is what I believe the sector needs to find what the issues are and begin to uh, address them. So that if Tor gets requisite crude and has to uh, refine here, it will refine at a cost which will be competitive to what others are bringing in. It's just like the other cheap products that get dumped onto our local market, poultry and other things. You know, economies of scale come into play. If somebody has huge refineries and cheap sources of oil elsewhere, and they can refine and bring onto our market. Nobody will mind what we have here. Nobody will mind because what we have Because of the cost here. of production here. And it's a free market. Valco is a different matter. We, ha we are, uh, mine uh, bauxite. And there are stages between the bauxite ore and preparing it into alumina. It has to go through the addition of silica and other things before you get the alumina, which is what uh, Valco can smelt. Mm. Unfortunately, at the time Valco was being uh, built, our sponsors from um, outside, they didn't... Uh, they didn't think that it was prudent for a country like Ghana at the time, which was just about emerging out of colonialism, to have the power, having so much bauxite deposits, to process it 100% in country. So up till today... We can only do halves. Yes, up till today. The raw bauxite that is mined, which is like your uh, laterite that you mm -hmm. put on the road, mm -hmm. is carried into ships sent as far as Jamaica, processed, and then brought here to Valco for smeltering. So Valco is there all right, but Valco cannot prepare from the beginning. No. It has to only be given almost half mm -hmm. completed production. Precise, precisely, and that is why we have to pay attention to the, uh, to the interventions that various governments make. Manado came in and we've passed the bill for the Integrated Aluminium Development Corporation, whose job now it is to take that bauxite and put it into the form that Valco okay. can. So you can't evade my questions. I'll ask them again. If you yes. were in charge, yes. say Minister for Energy or Trade, yeah. would you push for Valco and, and Tor to go the way you sent that, Ghana Telecom? That is what I'm saying that. Not at the moment. There is no other entity 
in Ghana doing what told us. So they should stay there? There's no other entity doing what uh, Valco does. But again, the problems of how the government can fund and finance these entities remains the challenge I described Yes, yeah, so my, my, my question so, is that, should, I'll, we not I'll give it to, question. should we not give it to a private person to run it for us? That's why I'm saying that. It depends on uh, what we want to achieve with these entities and government's capacity to handle them alone. If government's resources allow government to be able to handle these entities alone and there is not much competition around to compete with them, then by all means government can remain in that business. But again, if uh, we've gotten to the point where other government interventions, other government business will not allow government alone to be able to do these things, then in my view there's no okay. uh, problem. So there's no straight jacket rule. There's no straight jacket. There's no problem bringing in private participation okay. of sorts. I'm and, not and just uh, remember that, for instance, with the Ghana Telecom issue, we didn't arrive at where we are today at one go. We went through the phase with Malaysia Telecom. They were a minority shareholder, mm -hmm. 30%. Mm -hmm. Then we went into the management contract with the, uh, Denmark. You remember? Yes, before eventually we got to the point where we felt, let there be government be minority shareholder. I'm not interviewing the Minister for Industry. I'm interviewing mm -hmm. someone who was once a Deputy Minister, and we're just talking about industrialization because it's part of the things he learned. But the main reason we are having this conversation is that he wants to be General Secretary of the Governing New Patriotic Party. When we come back, I'm going to ask him why he wants to do that, really, and what his plans for the party is. This is Face to Face. Please stay with us. City TV is live on DSTV. Go to channel 363. On Go TV, access City TV on channel 182. On a digital TV, please press the menu button on the remote control and run a new search on your TV. Take note that without an antenna, you cannot access City TV on your television. City TV can be accessed on a free to air digital box like the Go TV and Star Times box. City TV, it's your world. You welcome back to Face to Face on City TV. My name is Omaru Sanda Amado here with a former Chief Whip of Parliament, former MP for Suhum, who wants to be General Secretary of the New Patriotic Party, Honorable Frederick Oparianza. Why do you want to be MPP scribe? Well, I have given a lot of thought to the question because I've been asked several. People have even suggested that why don't you want to be national chairman? Why are you not joining the flag bearer race? Uh, Joe Gatti was my colleague when we came to parliament. Adani Mo is my mate in uni and okay. he came to meet me in parliament and left before me. He did two terms, I did four terms. Okay. Why are you not joining that run? I think that our party needs to be fixed before anybody even thinks about riding it to win power. I have traveled the length and breadth of the country. I've seen uh, how party uh, folks, some are kind of losing faith. And I think we need to find space to be able to remotivate the party base, to be able to recapture power. I mentioned to you the things I, I, I mean, the fact that I was able to hold down the Suhum seat for a long time. The country is divided just into constituencies, and the kind of things that I did there can be replicated everywhere. The kind of challenges that I have observed in the party also. You were hinting at the fact that you think uh, Jubilee House may have gone after me or, for that matter, somebody else. I didn't say I think. I was asking if you think. I said you hinted at that hinted, you were thinking I, it. No, I was hinting as whether you were thinking. Okay, so the hints mm -hmm. that you give mm -hmm. indicates to me that uh, possibly you might be thinking that mm -hmm. that is a reality. No, I was asking. I okay, wasn't so thinking it. My, 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 my point being here that the, that being the notion, uh, it means that Somebody must be thinking that way. and so Many people, actually. See, there you go, including you. <laughs> Maybe it's possible. I'm conceding now. <laughs> you 
you know, so one needs to work hard to dispel these notions in the minds of especially our party followers. So you need someone who uh, can take on anybody. When I, t I, I say take on, I don't mean a cost, but I mean take on any issue that may be revolving around these things and bridge the uh, various sides of the party, bring them together, forge a stronger bond among mm. party folks. So I think the question would be, what is wrong with the MPP now? The first thing is what we are talking about, uh, some level of intolerance. From where? From within the party, where somebody uh, in an uh, official capacity thinks that when I was seeking that office, you did not support me, and for that matter, I have to discard you. But in times past, this was not in the MPP. Don't, don't forget that the party has always seen some parts and sides to it. Right from the days of uh, Dankwa Buzia through the days of Etozu and Pauli and you know. But even in recent times, we've had the capacity to bring in a CPP member to be the chairman of our party. That is how tolerant this party was in the past. We brought in Francis Isiam from the NDC, the women organizer, to join our ranks. We've done so many of these things, which shows how tolerant we were in the past. You but brought, today, you brought Abu Ramadan from PNC. From PNC. Mm. From, but today, when people go for even polling station elections and somebody did not support them, they do no longer want to involve them in party matters and party activities. And it is creating a lot of apathy for us. So one, which, side, so one side alone will chop? I don't know if they are chopping. Hey, did <laughs> I don't know if they are chopping, <laughs> but... Uh, it is it is just that they are not properly involved in the affairs of the party, especially as we are in government. So you need someone who has that capacity. Look, when Brian and I had our primaries back in 2008, we tied three times. This is a constituency 12 battle. We tied. And then National Executive Committee decided that I should be the candidate. Candidates. Can you imagine how Brian's supporters took the uh, decision? We'll be embittered very highly embittered, but I was able to bridge the gap, reassure them, brought them on board the campaign, truly and indeed, not for the fact that I was just doing it for doing sake. Until date, some of the people who are uh, my closest associates came from that uh, occurrence. Again, I did it in 2011, after our 30th April uh, parliamentary primaries back then, which I'm sure you came to. I was uh, there with Samuel Osei to do a yes. documentary. And Again, it was a one. tough one. Mm. After that, my campaign committees were chaired by Brian's campaign team members, those who were going around with him. They so, came so, to you, so you did the Kufo thing where you bring all parties into your government. Precisely. He so, called it something. I've forgotten what yes. it was. So, so you need that all in, kind all of... All inclusive. Yes. You need inclusiveness. That is actually the problem there. Intolerance leads to non-inclusiveness but we need to have inclusiveness then again we need to uh you see again you have a notion that there's some a going on no i don't have that notion you're well, the one well, so i'm just helping you you were bringing the words no i was just importing <laughs> sure to a lot of people no, you know? i was just importing <laughs> for, uh, so, phrase for you so we need to be able to remotivate the base of our party for people to feel that there is a reason why i should go and even fight for the party to retain power I don't know if people at this moment have that reason, but I have what it takes to give them that message. I'll ask you to state the rest of the problem in yes. the party, but this thing you're saying, yeah. are you saying it because when Akufado won, he didn't put you in his government, so you were not inclusive of the Akufado government? Does, no. it put, does it go up to the government level, or this is just a party I, problem? I wouldn't say that. I have... No, but if what you're explaining, yeah, the I party, had occasion it means happening also in the government, too. I've, I've had occasion to even... Uh, express uh, my worry about uh, the president and the myriad of choices of persons that he has to fill portfolios. Uh, if you take a single sector, energy, communications, finance, you can have lots of brilliant minds in our party who can occupy it. I always tell people, look, I came in young guy from nowhere uh, in Jukufo's administration, he made me deputy minister. 
Why should I be worried if I'm not a minister in an adult government? There are others equally capable of delivering, and they are delivering. And so that is the least of my worries. So I don't, I'm not saying in that mm. regard that there's been some non inclusiveness. So, so, uh, so, so it means that, then that, that Freddie Blay, John Boydou, uh, uh, and Nana B, they are also working with people who are very competent, so they don't need to bring the other people in there. Okay, Jim Fua, they are working with people who they think are very some, competent. Sometimes. So they don't need to bring others alive if, if the theory with so, Akufa is good. It is not just about bringing uh, somebody to do, to do something that uh, somebody is already doing. Mm. In instances, you can see clear gaps. Today, today, if you ask an MPP person to show you the ID card, it has expired. Everybody's card has expired. Their membership cards. If you ask me now that you want to be a member of the MPP, how can you get a membership card? I have no idea. I have been touring the constituencies. I just came from Sunyane yesterday to come and file my nomination. All the Bono constituencies, all they have constituencies, all the northern, but everywhere I have gone to campaign, I ask them, show me one party card that is not expired. And then tell me how I can renew mine. There is no clear processes. This is the party that has birthed the government, which has come in and solved the, the country's own national ID problem. We have solved it to the point that we are so confident that, Omaru, you, you have a national ID. So we oh, are I do. Good. I do. Because you and say I if I don't get it, you collect my SIM card. Precisely. Mm. So everybody has it. You threatened me. We threatened you because we had put in the systems in place to deliver. And we know human beings as we are. We are all sometimes uh, averse to change. And so there's some uh, level, some, some level of um, uh, inertia. So even if there was need to use force to get people to have their... So is it that you don't have a structure where if your party card expires, you can automatically renew? Uh, maybe you should call the general secretary into the program. You are an, so uh, you are an old member of so, the party. You, so, so that doesn't exist at the party headquarters. That's what I, don't, don't take my word for it. Ask the national officers to tell you how members of the party currently can renew their So at the Suhum office, if you went today that you want to renew your card, they can't help you? I don't even need to go because I know there is no such mechanism anywhere in the party to renew your party card. Where do they print your party cards? They last printed them during Sir John's time. Are you serious? Yes. And they expire after what, four years? I don't even know about the expiry. No, which one is yours? I don't, you, I don't you have, have the card here, okay. so I can't say about the expiry. But, but yours has expired. The truth is everybody's card has expired. So you're an expired MPP member and you want to lead the party? Including the general secretary. <laughs> <laughs> His own card has expired. Expired? Yes. Are you sure? This is national television. Yeah, you've thrown a challenge. You said I should go and check. Ask I don't, him, um, how do members of his party, the NDC, the opposition party, they are doing biometric registration. So when I tell you about that... But you have talent, a voter register that you've used to elect polling station executives, constituency executives, regional executives. Everybody was, was not the national voter register. There's yes. no party register. Yes, but didn't they show... Didn't you have to show party card at the polling station to vote? I thought that was part of the requirement. N knowing that this problem exists, look for the... The, the communication, the communication the, that went for, to guide that election. Yes. You will see it's either you have a party card or you are a known member. Yes, you get uh, guaranteed. So, 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 not guaranteed, that you are a known member. So now it comes to the discretion of people. No, of the, of the polling station, which is the... That's, but the polling station people were themselves going for elections. So now if I'm in... You see why there was so much confusion now? Now if I'm in the queue and they know and think I'll not vote for them, they say, no, we don't know, you are not an MPP member. Mm. So there was nothing to identify you. There's a nothing. A document. No. Where there's nothing. So only use a Ghana in, voters in card. In some parts of the country, including Suhum, you will find that the constituency itself has printed some dues paying cards for their members. And this is not national in character. So you can use that. So they sometimes say, well, we know. But then there are people also holding um, party cards from uh, Hinnington's time, some from Dambojo's time, uh, saying that, well, I'm a member, and everybody knows them to be a member of the party since then, and they vote. So clearly... How would you fix that card problem? You're um, going to see Dr. Baumia to help you? Omaru, I am the person who brought the first debit card into this country, e-card. I built it. I was part of the team of engineers who brought Mobitel into this country. 
sitting in my bedroom and creating a USS code star MPP hash so you can enroll, you can pay your dues. It should not take me more than one week. But because I will need National Council permission to implement such a system, give me three months when I'm General Secretary. And you fix the party card problem. What other problem is there with your party? That needs to be fixed, for which reason you have to boot out your chief administrator. The non-openness of dealings in the party. You, How? Give, you send out forms to people, it's being hidden, you are not communicating properly to people. Internal communications of the party. Today, party executives at various levels have to work with instructions released through press releases internal party communication has collapsed. Some of the challenges we are having in dealing with government policy implementation is because our own party people do not understand the government policies and it is the job of the secretariat to ensure that you've put in measures. We have Tescom people all over the country. What do they do when they go home for vacation? Ilevi came. Who went to explain to any person in the party properly? I'm not talking of radio discussions. I'm talking of the rationale behind government's policy to its party members. How does the government get feedback? From the, leg, the, base? the legwork. Yes, from the base of the party. Does, how does the government know how the impact of E-Levy will even be on the population and the electorate before it brings it to parliament? The general secretary sits at cabinet. When the minister for finance took E-Levy to cabinet, his concern was in raising revenue to fix the economy, and that must be so. When the Minister for Communications went to cabinet, his concern was whether the networks and the related ancillary resources would be in the position to handle the additional burden of collecting e-levy. So concern. you need a party head to... So you need a party head to look at the political implications of that e-levy. Where was the General Secretary then? We have real issues in this party. It is not just about, uh, I have the big brain. Big brains can be as a result of tumor. This one is not a big, he didn't say big head, he said big brain. Big brain is big but brain. But your head from is not a It is your brain which but is Adrian a say, That is big brain. means big brain. It can say. be uh, uh, as a result of a tumor. That's what oh, I said. Oh, how, how? Why are you attacking? <laughs> I'm you, not attacking Who you. said Who said this? Why have you done this? <laughs> this is face to face on City TV. My name is Umaru Sandaman. We're here with someone who wants to beat John Buedo, and uh, this is what he has decided to outline the face to each thing. So, your party card is a problem for you. Transparency. What else is there that you think? Internal communications, I've mentioned. Internal communication. That, I thought that's transparency. Not necessarily. No, no. I so talked about how the things we do sometimes are shrouded and clouded in secrecy, okay. and it causes. Uh, people to be angry. I'm proceeding to court. I'm doing this. Okay, because so that's the transparency bit. Yes. And then the then internal, internal communication. communication. I described how... But is that not the job of the communications director? That should be Bobby and Samoa's problem. Why are you putting no, it on the, the head of... That is the difference here. The communications directorate is responsible for communicating the party policy, government policies and things to Out, the external... Outside. Outside. I'm talking of internal communication of our party it's totally okay. different okay yes okay so, so that's in the, what else do you have find a difficulty with that you want to come and fix i have talked about the motivation of the base of the party you want to give them money not necessarily money i have mentioned that you need to give them a new reason why they should go how, how would you give them a new reason when they struggled on re, under the rain and under the sun to make sure your party is elected? I still see some of the photos of some of them kneeling down in the rain holding placards. Uh, they voted for you, Paul. Uh, only a few people are enjoying. They are but, seeing but if what you are saying is true, mm. then between me and the incumbent, who is better placed to remotivate those people? Who yeah, will they believe? But that's a government the one problem. that they not... followed mm. and came. But... A government problem, a general secretary who sits in cabinet, you are not part of the government, and what are you? What if they don't give you a chance? What can you do? And you control the whole party. You only control party when it's in opposition. When it's in government, the president runs everything. That's not true. Really? You can That's stand up true. to the president? Me. The last time someone did it under your government, you remember what happened to him? His name is Eseku. You remember? Harun Eseku. Yes. Did he stand up to... Didn't he? 
I don't was, think was so. there no problem with him? I don't. You want John Boyd to do the Harun Ezeku stuff? I I don't think Harun Ezeku stood up to the president in any way that I can recollect. I would have to give you some refresher courses in history. Now, how about have you... about uh, kickbacks to the castle back then? That is not standing up to the president. What was it? That is being indis indis indiscreet. That is saying things you shouldn't say. But if you think that indeed kicks, kickbacks are good and they are real, which I don't support, and you think it is happening and it is damaging the president, you first need to accost the president so that he puts a stop to it. What if, if you, you not, do that and it's not go working? You don't as a man can and see it at a party meeting. Yeah, but what if you try it and it's not working? Maybe John Boydo has been begging. So I don't bring E. Levy. They didn't mind then, him. Then his begs don't work. So that's why he should step aside and put some of us there. And let's see if it will work or it will not work. Why would you be the guy who can fix all these problems? I have told you what I have done in Suhum. That's just that constituency just level. You've never held even a regional position before. But I have been the chief whip of our party. And I managed the caucus for four years. You know the people who were in my caucus? Hakman Oswajima was there. Papu Swankuma was there. PC Apio Fori was there. Kennedy Japan was there. Joe Gatti was there. Professor Mio Kumfi was there. Professor Jambafo was there. Professor Fubi was there. You think I did not have a situation where some of these people had interests and I put my foot down and said, no, these are the rules and apply them firmly. I had such instances, but I applied them so firmly that I earned all their respect. I wish I could uh, ask the Honorable Oparansa what he makes of the current situation in Parliament. We don't have a lot of time. So when we come back, I'm going to ask him about the national campaign itself. So if or not he wins, how is MPP self going to even break this eight? It's going to be a Herculean task, isn't it? This is Face to Face. Please stay with us. City TV is live. On DSTV, go to channel 363. On GoTV, access City TV on channel 182. On a digital TV, please press the menu button on the remote control and run a new search on your TV. Take note that without an antenna, you cannot access City TV on your television. City TV can be accessed on a free to air digital box like the GoTV and Star Times box. City TV. It's your world. You're welcome back to Face to Face on City TV. My name is Omaru Sandama. I'm here with the Honorable Frederick Oparianza. He wants to be General Secretary of the MPP. What are the voters telling you, as in MPP voters, when you went around the country? When I went around the country, I was even surprised by the reception that I'm receiving. It's been so enthusiastic and so encouraging. They said they'll vote for you. He said he'll vote for me. Sir John has warned you, don't trust delegates. Ago. I have told you that I have been MP for four terms. So you know delegates very well. I have gone for primaries once in 2004. I've gone for primaries five times in 2008. I've gone for primaries once in 2011, 2020. So I know delegates. Then you also know that delegates, their mouth is very open. They like money. But are you are, giving money? But they are also discerning. But are you giving money? MPP delegates, I'm yet to see them get it wrong. Are you giving them money? No, I'm not. If you don't give money, you lose. So. Let's see what Because even the polling time. station, we saw, we've heard one of your original people, you saw that, how much money was spent in 10 hour elections. He said that he was over, I mean, he was blown away by the Umaru, figures. Yes. You and I yes. were not there. But he is a man. He came, the toad came out of the water and said the crocodile is dead. Why would I challenge it? Evidence. Evidence? He's a, I mean, he's a creditable human being. He, has, he said that your party was pumping money. People were spending so Omar, much money. I'm a creditable man. Yes. If I walk on this set now, as I saw you eating wachi downstairs, does it make it true? It's most likely. I had to watch it this morning, but I wasn't downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> I had to watch it this morning, but I wasn't downstairs. Well, so, so my issue you know, is that yeah. campaigning is very expensive, even if you don't pay bribes. It is expensive. And um, you know the things that make some of the things we do here seem corrupt is because we don't make rules for it. And so when one does it, in America, there's a whole institution called lobbyists, where you go and take your matter to them, you go and tell some MP mm. to 
do things on the pu pushing things for pushing you. things for you, then you get paid yeah. when they are going for election. You send some to support their campaign. Me here, if I'm MP and you, you are my brother or my friend, somebody comes to see you to tell me that I should fight for some interest in parliament, and then they give you some money, and later I'm going to election and you support me. This is corruption. That is why our corruption perception in this is usually where it is. So my but I'll answer mm -hmm. your question mm -hmm. in a moment. But if we were to regulate it, okay, if we were to regulate it such that it is above board, taxes are paid by these people, then it is no longer corruption. Mm. I'm mm. going to meet delegates, okay, in say, um, Suhum. Somebody lives in Asarik room. He has to come to the town. He has to come to the town for the meeting. I have called the person. They are not coming there. Uh, because the party has called a, me a meeting. So if he comes and I give him a hundred cities, that for the, your time, I'm not paying for your time, but for the time you've uh, spent in coming here to uh, listen to me, you came by Okada, the time you came by some water, food, I don't think it's something that... That may be fair, but yes. on election day, if you give that person a television set, that becomes bribery and corruption. I, I agree with you. That Again, your party, yeah, so your yeah. party should be transporting the people to the election ground, not you, the candidate. By turns out, that's what happens. And but, under the guise the, of paying transportation, but, but sometimes, you buy the votes. Sometimes, when we proceed in this direction, then it opens the whole debate about political party funding, whether the country should fund political parties mm. or not. Okay. Um, you have no, no way of telling whether the MPP has money to transport delegates to a location or not. Mm. But do you I'm have looking... money to campaign? That's a, see, you are well, going I'm, against an incumbent and three other people who are also running for the same that's, position. That's okay. I'm campaigning. I'm meeting delegates and I've just finished a number of re, re, uh, regions. When I leave here, I'm going to the uh, regional party office Greater Accra uh, region to meet the officials from there, I'm hitting the ground in Greater Accra region. So are you an establishment candidate or... Which one is the establishment? Establishment candidate is a candidate that is supported by so the I system. I know the definition. Oh, okay. <laughs> so by the system. Is the system supporting you? Uh, the system. Yes. I don't know if the system is supporting anybody. Have you but spoken to the system about your plan? I have spoken to everybody who matters in the have party. Have you met the president about not, this, your not plan? Not yet, but I plan to. I have spoken to the right persons, to rent audience, the chief of staff. And I'm sure she's giving me all the assurances that I'll see the president soonest. And you tell him that you want to run? Yes. If he says don't run, will you stop? I'm not asking his permission to run. We are telling him? Yes, it's nice and courteous. Okay. I'm going to be the general secretary. I will attend cabinet. Yes. It's only fit and proper that whilst I am at it, I inform the president that expect me very soon in cabinet. In your cabinet? You say it nicely. Whose I'm side, always whose side nice. are you on? In terms of? Flag bearer position? None. Are you sure? Absolutely. But you have an interest? Not at this moment. Oh, no. If you have interest in even sitting in cabinet when you have not even... If you just finished filing your nomination form. And you are thinking, you have to also know so, if you break the eight, the person who's going to break the eight with you, so you have you, to have a plan. So you know, when we've broken the eight, unlike some other aspirants, I think it's the incumbent. I have no intention of leaving the general secretary to become a minister. Oh, that's what his plan is? I've heard him say it's on social media, it's on YouTube. Oh, Google. it's not, it maybe it's not credible. But the Google. fact that you've seen it on social media. I've seen him saying it. Oh, he himself? Yeah. Maybe it's, it's on, a doctored video. Well, I'll, I'll give you the second challenge. <laughs> watch the video and then tell viewers that you watch it and it's doctored. And is, so you are not on he Dr. Bamiya's He says he's coming to you're not the general secretary. And then when you have booked in there, then you go and look for some ministerial thing to you do. You're not Dr. Bamiya's side, are you? I am not on anybody's side, but no. I'm not against anybody's interest. Okay, well. let me put the question again. You're not on Dr. Baumia's side, are you? I'm not on anyone's side in this contest. And for me, go to my Facebook page. You see an article I wrote that I think is a bit premature. All this, I want to be president, I want to be president. You, your party car, eh, it's like a bus without wheels. It's on blocks. There's no engine. And you're going you to sit on the driver's seat. You're looking for a driver. Huh? We have to first put tires under the car. Put an engine, make sure it's running efficiently. And when it's running, you come and put a lunch on there, won't you? Not at all. So who will you Not put Not at all. I will put the choice of the delegates that will create a level playing field to allow any Tom, Dick and Harry worth the attention of delegates. Have you spoken to John Kufo about this, your campaign? I have. He's, he's blessed you. I don't know if you call it blessing, but certainly there is no objection. 
He said, you are fine. You can go ahead. Absolutely. Have you spoken to but him? But again, I didn't go seeking his blessing or his you want to inform objection. Him. I went to inform him. Just like I mentioned about the president. If you win... I've informed Vice President Baumia. I've informed all the other aspirants. If you win the general secretary position and your party loses 2024, will you resign? I will not resign. Why? And we are not even going you, to lose. You're giving them promised land. If you don't, if you take them to the mountaintop and show them Canaan and they've not, you can't but, take them. But we are not even going to lose. And I'm I will just not saying resign if. because mm. depending on what the causes are, we will look at it and fix it and bring the party back in the shortest possible If time. you fail to win the general secretary position, yes. would you still work with whoever wins? Even now, as I, uh, I am working, campaigning, I'm still working for the party. So you work for the general secretary who is elected if it is not you? Depending on what role they may even want to assign me, if they decide to assign me. You're willing to do that? Always. Do you have someone you want to be in cabinet with? And I'm referring to your yeah, MPP. Yes, chairmanship. Not at all. I don't have any preferences. Again, there, I have excellent relations with all the aspirants. So you're fine with anyone who becomes... I'm fine with anyone. You don't worry that there's going to be a party where the general secretary is going in one direction and the chairman is going in another direction? How can the chairman and the general secretary go in different directions when there's only one constitution of the party? Yeah, but that's one constitution, but there could be interests. The interests cannot override the party's rules. I'm Honorable. going to be the guardian of the party's rule. As a general secretary, you have the singular responsibility to ensure that rules are applied both above you and below you in a fair but firm manner. I want you to look at the camera for 30 seconds, speak to MPP members and tell them why they should vote for you. We have told you as we've gone around meeting you delegates, the solutions that we hold to be able to retain our party in office, to be able to remotivate the base to continue fighting to bring this party to power. We've responded I've responded adequately to all the questions you've posed to me as we go around. And you have told me that answer has the answers. Honorable answer, thank you for joining us on Face to Face. And my name is Umaru Sandamadu. Thank you for watching. Please stay with City TV. It's your world.